This short clip gives you insight into the handling of contacts in ANSYS Workbench. The following aspects will be explained. Visualization of contacts, manually defined contacts and the selection of hidden faces, automatic contact generation and gap tolerance, and reviewing the contacts. Therefore, we will consider the rear axle differential of a tractor. Let's start with the visualization of a single contact. After selecting one contact in the structure tree, the participating bodies of the contact will be highlighted since the non-participating bodies take highly transparent a back seat. After switching into the wireframe mode, the visualization of the contact area might be improved. The area of the target faces is shown in blue, whereas the contact faces are marked red. A more transparent presentation of a contact area is achieved by using so-called body views. Additionally displayed views show only the participating bodies distinguishing between contact bodies and target bodies, on request also with synchronized graphical interaction. The automatically generated contacts after the geometry import can be reviewed individually which might be cumbersome. However, it is possible to select a part and to show related contacts in the structure tree via the right mouse button menu. In this manner, part-related bonded contact areas can be examined easily. Furthermore, you may display the common contacts of selected bodies, in this case the gear housing and the lid. To do so, one has to select the wanted bodies or even only faces of the wanted bodies and choose the option Show contacts common to selected bodies via the right mouse button. As we can see, the contact number 3 is assigned to both bodies. To define contacts, we can use two different procedures. The first one is the manual contact generation and the second one the automatic contact generation. Let's take a look at the manual contact generation. Therefore, one needs to select the corresponding contact face of the first body together with the corresponding contact face of the second body followed by clicking on the contact creation button. If one of those faces is hidden and cannot be selected directly, the face indicator in the left bottom corner of the graphic window helps to control the face selection. With the press control button, the user may add or remove faces from the selection. If the user wants to define contact areas with more than one face per body, the contact object is inserted first in the structure tree. After that, the desired contact and target surfaces can be assigned to the contact object. In contrast to the manual contact definition, the automatic contact generation may be used. This happens either during a new geometry import or subsequently and also upon request for a specified subset of parts. The contact identification is then based on a gap tolerance depending on the diagonal of the assembly. Only if the gap is smaller than the gap tolerance, the contact will be generated. The gap tolerance may be adjusted with the slider or also with a direct input value. After varying this tolerance value, a new contact identification process has to be carried out. Having a closer look at this vault, one can see that two contact areas were recognized. The first one is located between the bolt head and the flange area, the second one between the screw shaft and the threaded hole. The visibility of the contact areas is even better when switching into the wireframe mode. To summarize, Ensys Workbench offers different methods of contact generation. 
Also large assemblies can be treated efficiently with the help of a reasonable use of the automatic contact generation. Now it's up to you to benefit from the convenient possibilities of contact generation, reviewing and visualization in ANSYS Workbench. <laughs>